What's up, everybody? I'm here with Max Egan of The Crow House, which is a great uh, podcast that it teaches us about what's really going on with the world. Um, last, last year, I met you here briefly. We were talking about, uh, you were really heavy into explaining about what the 5G grid is all about. Um, what have you been working on since, since last year? What's finally taken up your focus? Well, 5G is a lot of it. I mean, 5G is not backing down. So it's, that's been a lot of the focus. Um, a lot of it lately has been history. Um, if you've been listening to the podcast, a lot, of, a lot of what my recent focus on has been the fact that they've manufactured most of our history. It appears that history has changed. And it's interesting because history is what first got me into this whole thing. And uh, so I've kind of done full circle and come back to history, which is, which is good. But um, you know the main problem, the main focus at the moment is this digitization of everything and 5G, which is a real concern for everybody. I think people should be paying attention to it. I agree. I mean, I find myself in a situation where I've completely eliminated myself for the most part from the fiat system and everything is digital and all of my transactions are being put into this blockchain and whatever algorithm that's being built to track me down will do that soon. That's so the thing. So it's like, what am I doing? Am I like participating in this this strange like digitization of everything that's like basically like hurting the sheep into whatever is coming that's basically what's happening i mean the, the cryptocurrency guys have got a lot of really good ideas but they're not looking at the social crediting system and everything that's rolling out over the top now because everyone's trying to extricate their self from the system using digital means but they're only really focusing on the, the fiat part of it the the money control part of it but there's a lot more aspects than that and, and in a real world where we've got a sane world and a sane society and things are done above the board and with a bit of transparency, crypto would work. It would free us from that fiat system. But if people aren't factoring in the, the, the reality that the, the government's looking at this and they're, they're working out a control mechanism to go over the top of that. So they've got an umbrella they can put over any freedom we create, which through social crediting and the digitization of everything, which is what they're doing. And it makes perfect sense that they would do this. I mean. Like I said, when you look at the crypto world, in, in a real society, cryptos could very well free us from this fiat system, and they're not going to allow that to happen. So that's something that the crypto digital crew have got to factor in, the so whole social crediting system, um, the removal of passwords, biometric scanning, everything the way it's going. And in, in a social crediting system, it won't matter how much crypto you've got. If you're limited in your purchasing power due to your political viewpoint, it doesn't matter. You can have trillions of dollars in the bank. You can't spend it on anything. You know? And it's all fiction anyway, it's just stuff they made up, even the fiat stuff, the whole concept of money, it's a fiction. I mean, it's just, a, just an idea, we don't really need it. But it's uh, living without money is something that is completely alien to people's way of thinking. It's an interesting thing, you know, you can get a tribal culture that lives on an island, never seen money. Yeah. They get along fine and you introduce a monetary system to them within one generation, they don't know how to live without it. So it's an interesting thing. It's, it's a form of mind control in itself. Absolutely. I'm trying to distance myself from it. I moved to Costa Rica last year. I ended back up in the States for a while. And then uh, I'm back there now, really teaching myself permaculture and just how to detach from the system entirely. You know, I mean, the next bull run is my out. And I don't want anything to do with finance or even the internet as a whole. I mean, I'm an artist and I make a lot of digital pieces of art that are um, influential and, and, and inspiring. But I'm also a painter, I'm also a sculptor, and I'm also completely content with distancing myself from the internet entirely. Yeah, I mean, well, there's nothing wrong with technology per se. I mean, I mean, the internet is, is uh, it's, it's a fishing exercise, the internet, really. I mean, what do you do with the net? You catch things. What do you do with the web, you know, the World Wide Web? You know, it was never really about giving us freedom. It was about locking us into this virtual world and, and limiting our potential to be able to paint things and do, do real artwork. I mean. A lot of people I know that used to be good painters are now digital painters and they have to kind of go and retrain themselves to be able to paint properly again. A lot of people I know can't write properly because they type all the time. So their, their writing skills, you know, if you don't practice these things, you lose them. It becomes more difficult to write. You might know how, but you find that you know, your hand doesn't work quite as well. So, you know, all of this stuff is, is limiting us. But, you know, technology, there's nothing wrong with technology. The, the problem is the fact that the world's run by criminals who are controlling what the technology is doing, controlling where it's leading us. The cacostocracy, as you said. Well, the cacostocracy, yeah. And with the whole social system, the whole social media world that we've now got, rather than a real media, real interaction with people, people are losing their basic life skills through social media. Yeah. And that's not a good thing at all. And that's where technology does become a problem, you know? I've noticed that social media has a problem for me because it's sort of making me, sometimes makes me something that I'm not. And 
um, with Steam specifically, it's basically social media blockchain uh, stuff, and that's like that's how I feel like I get people into the blockchain to learn about this stuff. We also have to educate them about how to maybe start using Monero and other privacy coins and start trying to stay into the shadows, essentially. Well, to a degree, but you're not going to be able to stay in the shadows is the problem. With, with what's coming out, with, with the whole digital track that you're leaving, even if you stay in the shadows, that's going to attract attention. The fact that you're trying to stay in the shadows, they're going to go, what's you doing wrong? You know, so it's we've, you've got to find that balance. Just try what what we have to do, I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with technology. What we have to do is, is factor in the reality the world's run by criminals and deal with it. We got to deal with these people who are controlling things. That's what we have to do. Um, we can't be politically correct about it. We can't be saying, "Oh, well, okay, we'll, we'll have this sort of crypto that's going to work." If the world's run by criminals and it's going to keep going in the direction it's going, until we deal with that, nothing's going to change. You know. So that's what I was saying in my talk about opening up your heart and connecting with people around you, helping people, just helping people. Doing that—that's the best form of non-compliance that you've got, because this system wants you to put an economic value on every interaction you have with anybody else. And, and that, that is the basis of the whole problem. You know, we think time is money. We think that there's got to be some form of economic value for what we do rather than the real personal value of just being alive and helping people. It's good to help people. It feels good. It makes you feel good. It's good for you. Yeah. Good for me. Good for everybody. You know, so we've got to get back to that. You know, a lot of this stuff is just removing us of our basic humanity. That's the problem, you know. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with technology, but when you put an economic value on everything and... Um, start trying to find ways to fight the system or or whatever just disconnect from it and the best form of disconnection the best form of non-compliance is to be always in your moral compass that is the, the the revolution that will change the world the rediscovery of the self because everything that we've got in this world is a loss of self that's what's brought us to this whole problem people don't know who they are anymore you know we have to just just take the time out just to sit back just for five minutes you know and just say wow who am i what am i you know, I just wish I could get on a mountaintop and just scream out, stop, just stop. Listen to me for five minutes. Give me five minutes of your time and I'll change the world. You know, but you just can't get anyone to stop. Everyone's running on the treadmill. And when they do try to find a way out, it's, it's what new system can I do or whatever. They, they don't realize it's, it's the internal work. As soon as you change that, it's a ripple effect and the world has to change around you. And so we don't need to create any, any new culture, any new society. If we change what's in our heart space and change the way we interact with people, then society has to change around us. It won't have another choice. You know? We don't have to create anything. It's already there. You know, we just have to have to rediscover ourselves. That's the key to the whole thing. Great. So you want to tell these guys where they can find you, find your work? You can find my work on thecrowhouse.com. My name's Max Egan. You'll find everything that I do on thecrowhouse.com. There's nothing to buy, no subscriber section. It's all free. Thousands of web pages on that site. It's been there for 10 years. Just a portal to you, to use, to throw around, to show people what the world's really about and how powerful they really are. Thank you for listening. Join the state of anarchy. This September's Harvest Moon in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where this gathering of like minds aims to foster unbreakable relationships between the movement's leading forces whom teach self-love and ownership, blockchain techno-economics, as well as exposing the Earth's sacred hidden knowledge. So will we see you there?